Radio. You're listening to PetLifeRadio.com. Is your pet stressed out? Does your pet need annual vaccines? Which pet is best for a child? Would you know if your dog was in pain? Pet Life Radio presents The Pet Doctor, where you'll learn everything about keeping your pet healthy and happy. From pet care, pet meds and grooming, to pet food, pet insurance, and dental care, this is the place to find out everything there is to know about pet wellness. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets because it's your pet. Health matters. Please welcome your pet doctor host, veterinary media consultant and veterinarian, Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Hello, this is Dr. Bernadine Cruz. I have a confession. I love to travel, but tend to misplace my belongings along the way. In October 2015, I had the opportunity to tour China. I saw marvelous sights of antiquity and treasure. But what I enjoyed the most was meeting the people and, being a veterinarian, seeing how they interacted with their animals. During my visit, I was fortunate to gain insights into the Chinese human-animal bond by interviewing Miss Lily Li, the director of companion animal business, Zoetis China. I also had the frustration of misplacing the device I used when I conducted our conversation and had no backup of our meeting. Grr. Well, happy dance time. I found the device and the lost interview of Shanghai. Miss Lee and audience, please accept my apologies for the tardiness of getting this interview on the net. I think you will agree, however, it was worth the wait. Xie xie. Thank you. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. Yuppie Puppy City Kitty provides pet lovers an opportunity to earn up to 50% commission selling our premium pet products. Advocate Gina Brick says, the opportunity to share such a quality product line with other pet lovers is amazing. The support of the Yuppie Puppy City Kitty family while working the business is a true gift. Mention special code PETLIFE when you enroll today and receive three additional products free. Find us at www.ypckpets.com. That's ypckpets.com. It's hard to find time for your furry family member. That's where Camp Bow Wow comes in. All day play and overnight camp, daycare and boarding for dogs. Everything is included. Large play areas for fun and exercise. Spacious cabins, comfy cots, even live camper cams to watch from a computer or smartphone. Camp Bow Wow offers the best care and is the place to go where a dog can be a dog. For locations and more information, visit CampBowWow.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. This is Dr. Bernadine Cruz and I have the pleasure right now to be in Shanghai. And I also have the pleasure of chatting with a newfound friend, Miss Lily Li. She's the director of Companion Animal Business in China for Zoetis. Miss Li, thank you very much for chatting with me today and my listeners. It's my pleasure to have the opportunity to have this conversation with you and uh, to communicate to your listeners <laughs> for your program. Tell us, I always ask the people that I'm interviewing to give us a little bit of your background. So you were born in China, and how did you start to work for Zoetis? What is your background? Yes, I came to join Zoetis two years ago. Hmm. I worked in another companion animal company for 10 years. So I have been working in animal health care for over 12 years now. So it has been a long time. So I just enjoy working with animals. So, yeah, so I love it. Mm -hmm. People in the United States and part of the Western Westerners are now beginning to treat their cats and dogs much more as part of the family. And I've been very happy to see that here in China, and we've been traveling since October the 1st, and right now it's, I don't remember what today is, I think it's the 15th, having seen so many parts of your country 
And even in areas where maybe they're not as westernized as Shanghai or Beijing, these dogs and cats, really, you can see how people have taken them into their home. Is this fairly new here in China that cats and dogs are, as they used to be in the United States, in our backyards and now they're in our homes? Is this new? Fairly new. I would say we have our first clinics in Shanghai about 20 years ago, but now we, we can see pet shops or clinics almost on all the streets now. So has been a gradual change over these 20 years from the first clinic to now we have over like 100, 200 clinics in Shanghai now. And we have about 500 pet shops here. So, and the, the relationship um, people with their animals also changes over the time. So more and more people treat pets as their family members. And sometimes I agree with you, they pay more attention to their pets than they are actually real family members. So we have a lot of jokes about they have a Medicare, pedicare, massage, spas just dedicated for pets. Oh, you're as yeah, crazy yeah. as we are then in the United yeah, States. Yeah, they have a lot of their own costumes, everything. So, yeah, so we see that quite often now. Yeah, so, but on average, people are more pay attention to their pets and uh, the health conditions. So we see that mo momentum, yeah, uh, very clearly. Uh, not in the so-called first-tier cities in Shanghai, uh, in China, we call their four-tier cities. First tier, like Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, Shenzhen. Then we have second tier, which is a uh, capital city of different provinces. And the third, third tier is more big cities in each provinces. So Shanghai is, these first-tier cities is always ahead of other cities, but we see in the second tier, third-tier cities, more clinics, new clinics open, and the families spend more on their veterinarian cares. So it's a, a gradual kind of movement, but we, we definitely see uh, more of it. Our travel um, tour guide has a poodle herself and has pictures of her daughter and the poodle, and I think she has more pictures of her poodle <laughs> than she showed me than her, her daughter. And she was saying that her sister, who lives in Canton, uh -huh. had a small dog was having difficulties with birthing, had to have a cesarean section. And in U.S. dollars, it was about $2,000. Yes, you are paying as much as we are in the United States. So it was interesting to see. Mm -hmm. What are some of the health issues that you're having here in China? One of our biggest health issues in the United States is obesity, and I have not seen obese Chinese people or obese pets. I'm sure they're out there, but uh, I have not seen it. What are your major health issues here? For people or for, <laughs> for pets? For pets. Actually, it's more infectious diseases, hmm. still the major ones, like a parvo distempers. So we don't see that many of these cases in the States, but still they are the majority cases, especially for second and third tiers, because the vaccination rate is still not that high. But in Shanghai, we see less this kind of incidence now because vaccination, like Soyotis and all the other multinational companies, we bring the same vaccines here and we put a lot of emphasis to educate the pet owners. They have to go through this uh, vaccination protocols. So, so the clinics actually, they are like 10 years ago, their most of their income or their operation is to treat parvo and the distempered diseases. Mm -hmm. But in Shanghai, the first tier cities, for example, they see less, less this kind of incidence. So they are more need more new skills to treat new diseases. So we see more like a senior dog kind mm -hmm. of problems now in, in Shanghai's. Yeah. So more your more pets are living longer now. Long, longer now, yeah, yeah. So geriatric medicine is we're getting into also and preventive medicine. Right, exactly. Yeah, preventative medicines as well. Yeah. yeah. Even though I am from Southern California in the United States and Los Angeles, trying to think of uh, Shanghai would be a first tier city. I recently was with our local group of veterinarians. We went into a area of Los Angeles 
that was quite impoverished was poor. And we're still seeing there parvo and distemper and a lot of these diseases. So Shanghai and Los Angeles very much mirror each other. <laughs> yeah, we can find the similarities. And also you mentioned um, before the rabies. So in rural areas and the villages, it's still a problem for rabies and the human actually after being bitten mm -hmm. and uh, died. So uh, China, unfortunately, is still a top in terms of the mortality mm -hmm. um, just after India. So it's a, a misfortune because rabies is so easy to prevent, you know, but different to, difficult to, to cure. So we're still working on it. So for the rural areas to try to eradicate rabies here. It was interesting because I was with my tour group and we were in Tibet and we're going through the monasteries and there was a lot of dogs in the monasteries and I didn't see that many when we were in the main portion of Lhasa in the city. So I asked our local guide about this and he mentioned that the monasteries were considered sanctuaries so many dogs were left there so they felt that they would be safe. And uh, the other thing that I found very interesting, and it, it's sad because you're exactly right, rabies is such a preventable disease. So many people don't realize that there are more cases of rabies every year than there's been of Ebola virus. And everyone hears about Ebola and gets so scared of Ebola. It's like, wait, there's rabies, and that's something that we can cure. Well, can't cure, but we can prevent from happening. So how does Zoetis educate the populace here in China because it is such a huge number of people in such a huge area. Mm -hmm. How do you educate? So for example, like rabies, um, we work with provincial uh, veterinarian stations. They are, they are government um, offices. They help to prevent this kind of infectious diseases. So. We work with different level, like provincial level and also county level. To like in the springtime, we will provide a lot of posters, education brochures to help them to distribute through their network. And also, they will have bidding system to use the government fund to purchase rabies, and they will hire people to go to the villages to uh, vaccinate all the dogs they, mm -hmm. they can find. Mm -hmm. So we work with that uh, system also, but also in the veterinarian clinics in the cities. So it's the veterinarians try to educate the pet owners. So we give them tools to educate their patients about all these uh, diseases. So we kind of, for rabies, we're kind of working in two different channels. Yeah. So rabies has always been so good at educating the public and educating the veterinarian. I know I've worked, uh, thankfully, with Zoetis for many years and have always been very impressed. And it's nice to see that a multinational company has that same outreach in no matter what nation they're in, no matter what country they're in. Mm -hmm. Here we have more tasks and more responsibilities to, to do that, <laughs> I feel, because a lot of Fundamental messages, we still have to make it very clear and allowed to be repetitively communicated. <laughs> it's a hard right. lesson for people to learn sometimes. Right, at the beginning, to the basics, we, we need the pet owners to, to really remember and follow. With the fact that Zoetis is multinational and there are so many diseases, that are now spread. We talked about Ebola and how it's so easy for somebody to get on a plane not realizing they're ill and spread disease. Animal transport many times can be the same or birds flying. Are there particular diseases that are that Zoetis is working on here in China that may not be come to mind as one of the diseases that we would think about for instance in the United States? For companion animal, we don't find that much new. But for production animals, because like a swan, um, people here consume far more pox um, here. So a lot of diseases are unique to to China. 
And uh, so it is um, it's just about to open an R&D center here in Beijing. Mm-hmm. And uh, mainly just try to study the local strengths for production animals like a s- avian as well, chicken also, and the swan as well. So we can make vaccines just for the China market. Yeah. I know that you're doing uh, aquaculture now. I had the opportunity to be in Guilin mm-hmm. and go down the cruise on the Li River and see that there was many um, fish farms that mm-hmm. were there. And I know I never thought about it in veterinary school of vaccines mm-hmm. for fish. And as I was waiting for our chance to meet today, I was walking your streets in your area and came across a shopping street, a market street, where they had just lots of fresh fish and shrimp and um, presented in very different ways than we have in the United States. So you feed a tremendous number of people, and I can see why production animal health is so important to your country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the protein intake the food uh, safety and uh, also the the volume also is top of the mind of a lot of government officials as well. Very important to you. Yes, you have so many people to feed. Please have a seat in the waiting room. The doctor will be with you shortly, right after these messages. When we ran out, we stopped using it. Why would you stop? Why undo all the good that's been accomplished? We thought everything was fine, and that was not a good thing. No, 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 no. He started stinking. It was awful. Shedding comes back, loss of hair, lots of dandruff. Scratching will return. His shedding will increase. If I ever took Roy off of Dynavite, he would go back to his hair loss. <gasps> D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. When I get down to the bottom of my box of Dynavite, when I get to about three quarters. Oh no, I've got a couple more scoops. It's time to place my order. Dynavite.com. Each and every day she is getting that Dynavite. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Just feed your dog right. Use Dynavite. If it's working, don't quit. Don't do what I did and run out. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Looking for the best advice on pet health, safety, and travel? Connect with the Pet Lady. Dana Humphrey, also known as the Pet Lady, will surely be in a city near you real soon. She will be spreading the good news for pets and pet lovers from tips on dog and cat care, pet industry trends, and the best events for you and your four-legged family members. Need a great gift idea or insights on the hottest pet gadgets? Simply follow the Pet Lady on Twitter at Pet Lady World. You can also learn more at The Pet Lady at thepetlady.net. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to The Pet Doctor on Pet Life Radio with Dr. Bernadine Cruz. The doctor is in and we'll see you now. With Zoetis. You are working on, for instance, some of these vaccines for production animals. I know this is not your area, you mm-hmm. being director of companion animal medicine. When you come up with advances, I know in the United States trying to get certain drugs through our federal um, drug administration, FDA, it can be very difficult. Does Zoetis have the same type of difficulty if you come up with, because the disease that you have in pork here in swine can be, I'm sure, ones that we would have in the United States. Can you bring your advances to the United States or to Western areas a bit more easily since Zoetis is multinational? We haven't really tried to, for example, sell a local like a China developed product to United States. So what we try to do for now, because Andy Center is just open, so we'll mm-hmm. take three, four years to develop a, a new vaccine and also take in China another three to five years to register the product. So it's, the lead time is still huge. So for most part, we try to import to register the, so it is global portfolio to in China. In uh, China, the registration process is quite actually strict. We have to follow a lot of their own protocols and uh, sometimes even more strict than the 
U.S. FDA, because a lot of studies is only required by China government. So we have to do a lot of additional studies just for the China market. So a product have to be registered either in U.S. or EU. Then we can submit. But also with that kind of FDA dossier, probably still not hundred percent meet the China local、uh, requirement. So we have to do additional studies. So the registration time is quite tough for for like multinational companies. But also for the locals too, it is it's the same kind of standards we have to meet. It just take a more time to register product. I'm in your office right now, Miss Lee, and I'm looking at the exhibit that you have of some of the various products. Going, oh, I have that at my hospital, and I use that. So revolution、yeah. that you have. Do you have heartworm disease here? Disease carried by mosquitoes? Actually, in China,、uh, most of vets say they don't see that. Heartworm disease as often, but our neighboring countries like Korea, Taiwan, and Japan, heartworm disease is more is the awareness is much higher than in China. So we don't really know because of the diagnostic problem. People also say maybe ivermectin injection、uh, is very popular here. So we don't really don't know the reason, but the heartworm disease is not a well known disease yet in China. You say the magic word yet. <laughs> Myself being in Southern California, though I do recommend Revolution a lot. We don't see heartworm, but I think sometimes it's because we may not look for it as often as we need to. I did come up with one positive dog. I've seen two positive dogs in over the thirty years that I have been practicing medicine. So it's like I'm sure there's more out there, but yes, we need to stay vigilant. So I guess we all do. Yeah. Other products. What are some of the most popular products that Zoetis has here in China?、Yeah. So as an emerging market, so in United States, so like a vaccine is only about ten fifteen percent of the pharma kind of portfolio. Most are pharmaceutical product like Apple Core, whatever, right? Revolution parasiticides. But in in China, still the vaccination is the like ninety percent of the. Company sales, so we still at the beginning of the stage try to get all the dog vaccinated by the core vaccine、yes. protocols. So, and we see other pharmaceutical like parasiticides product are, are growing, but still the paradigm is different from as an emerging market. We are still selling mostly vaccine, and the, but our pharma products are increasing dramatically. Yeah, these recent years. So、I can imagine, as you're saying, your population of animals are aging. That using products like Rimadil、mm-hmm. for their aches and pains and old age、mm-hmm. uh, is going to be very important.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, we 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 are trying to register Rimadil for many years. We hope we can get it in the next you know year or two. So yeah, so a lot of good products so it is have in US, but we don't have it here. So we only have. About maybe ten percent of the medicines, so it is U.S. selling. But we only we don't have that. We only have about like eight products we're selling here for pets. So, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> When I've been traveling and looking at the dogs and cats that I've been seeing, some you know have collars and some were wearing clothes, and、uh, one little poodle had been to the beauty shop and had dyed fur. Mm-hmm. So yes, I'm seeing that Chinese can be as again as crazy as we are in in the West. I really, they all looked very healthy. None of them were skinny. As sometimes traveling in Mexico, they look a little on the sad side. And none of them seem to have skin issues. I mean, that is such a major problem, at least for me in Southern California, with fleas. And I don't know there are parts in the United States. Have problems with ticks on them. Do you have external parasites like fleas and ticks and lice? What do you have here in China? Yeah, we have that. So China, the breed is largely a small breeds because people in the cities. I'm talking about cities. They are living in small apartment. They don't have house. They don't have backyard. So the breeds are tend to like poodles, 
small dogs. So mm -hmm. and they because we are small apartment, so they live very closely with families. Mm -hmm. So they got very frequently by bathing mm -hmm. and uh, you know make a uh, cut. Um, what do you call haircut? Yeah, cut. Yeah, yeah, groomings, mm -hmm. all this. So they looks beautiful and. Uh, Chinese people treat them as a, a represent of their status or whatever. So they if they care about how their pets looks like uh, when they walk the dog. So yeah, <laughs> they they have a lot of parasites, like external parasites as well, fleas, ticks, scabies, mm. lice. Yeah, they have. Um, we we have that too here, and also. GI parasites as well, mm -hmm. yeah, very common here as well. Internal mm -hmm. parasites. Yeah, yeah, hooks, runs, yeah. Okay. It seems as though here in China, the advances that are being made are spectacular. And I think that the Chinese and the Westerners can work together to help improve animal health. And it's marvelous to see that Zoetis is, you know, here in China. Are there other pharmaceutical companies that are also here, some ones that we'd be familiar with in the, the West? Yeah, they all here. Oh, they okay. are very, have very high interest in China market, just like a Soviets. So the big players like Marial and uh, BIVI and Verbeck and the MSD, mm -hmm. all, all these players uh, invest more and more in, in this uh, country. So they all opened or tried to open R&D center. They are building their manufacturing facilities. They expand their sales force. So we are doing kind of similar things here. <laughs> I can see any idea of the number of registered, and do you need to register dogs and cats, kind of like a license that we have in the United States? Mm -hmm. Do both need to be registered or just dogs? Or That is depends on each municip municipality. Uh -huh. So for example, like Shanghai, the Shanghai government asked the pet owner, the dog owner, to have the license every year. So they required to do the Michael chip and also rabies shot at a designated pet clinics. Once they got that like a vaccination proof, they can go to like a management office to get their license. So each city has their own regulations and certain certain cities will say no big breed higher than this and bigger than that you is not allowed. So each city will have their own regulations in terms of what kind of dog breeds allowed and how often they need to get their license renewed. Yeah. Do they have to be neutered? Do they have to so mm -hmm. they can be they can still breed? Yeah, that that is not required. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was talking again to our, our tour guide and she was saying she lives in Xi'an and the amount of money for registering your pet depending on the city, first tier, second tier mm -hmm. city, mm -hmm. could vary tremendously in mm -hmm. cost. Mm -hmm. Do you have an idea of what it may cost to register a dog in Shanghai versus Chengdu? Shanghai right now is 300 RMB. It's about 50, 50 US dollars to register. That That's including yeah, vaccine and the, and the microchip. So it's not that bad. But okay. they use, I think they used to be like 2,000 RMB. So they uh, reduced. So at the beginning, like uh, 20 years ago, the government is not in favor of the pet ownership because they feel that China is still a developing country. They are, we need to feed more human than, you know, spend that much right. money. So, but then they realize they cannot stop it because people still adopt dog and the cats. So they realize they have to kind of manage it. So no disease will spread in our world. So they, they put a more realist kind of view of uh, pet ownership. So try to manage it to, to make sure um, the faci public facilities for walking dogs, you know, all this kind of uh, infrastructure, they try to build it to, to make sure the citizens feel, you know, the money they give to the government, they feel get some kind of return back. So... <laughs> So it's a lot of talking and a, 
a lot of radio shows, magazines also are very interested, and the TV shows are very interested in the pet hmm. uh, topics these days. Yeah, just right up my alley. What I do, just like having this radio yeah, show. Yeah, we can have you here. <laughs> Bring me back anytime. I will gladly come. I will learn Chinese. I'm trying to learn a few words. I know that in China you still have the one family, one child policy. Do you think that's some of the reason why pets have become so popular? Because, gee, you know, you can only have that one child, and the child needs someone to keep them company. I, I think it's definitely have relationship to do that because the empty nest, so people will feel they need a companionship, and also the life. The pace of here is quite fast yes. in the first tier cities. So even for the young people, actually a lot of adoptions are for the young, like in their twenties. So it's they feel they need this kind of stress release, kind of very good relationship with with a dog and cat. So yeah. So. When I was in Guilin recently, there is the.、Um, River that flows by in this wonderful walkway, and in the morning, all these、uh, women are out there doing tai chi. So, just learning, I was out there doing tai chi with them. And again, our tour guide was saying that the old people do tai chi, and the young people don't have the time to do it to relax. So,、um, yes, she agrees with you that having that pet is just a way you come home from work and go. <sighs> Relax with your dog and just give it some love. Seems like there's a lot more dogs in China that I'm seeing than there are cats. Or are the cats just in the apartments? They say it's three to one right now, like a three dogs, one cat.、Oh, But the cats population all grow. So in Shanghai, also we see like a cat only clinics、mm. opening. So、wow. yeah, and they also try to get their call cat friendly. Federation or whatever、uh, in the U.S.、Right. kind of they will have that try to get a license of that kind of so the people here the clinics invest a lot in their instrument so we have a three clinics have MRI and also a lot of clinics have their CT so in、oh. terms yeah so in terms the The level of their diagnostic kind of equipment is very good. A lot of people will foreign vets come to Shanghai or Beijing. They feel so impressed by how well equipped. Kind of impressed, yes.、Uh, so really, it seems like many of the same services we have in the United States you have here. Now we have board certified veterinary specialist. Is that available here in China for advanced learning that your veterinarians? Have advanced training. That is not yet. So the the China VMA still try to get the the vet license first, and the, we don't even have the C the continued education、um, credits yet. But they are discussing that as well, and the, we don't have specialist kind of board yet. But they are all discussing whether you know how when they going to launch this kind of thing. So a lot of discussion. On the way,、yeah. sounds like it will happen. So, people that are listening right now to you, Miss Lee, and thinking their company is going to transfer them to China and they want to bring their dog or their cat with them, is it fairly easy to bring a dog or a cat to China from、uh, another country? I think it's durable because actually I haven't really introduced myself. I moved back from U.S.、Oh. in two thousand eleven, and we have a cat. We brought it with us back to to Shanghai.、Uh-huh. So there are certain、um, procedure we have to go through, like what kind of certificate、uh, we need to get from our U.S. vet. So when we enter the Chinese customers, so we have to present、uh, the paperwork, and they have to be quarantined for like a week.、Oh. Then we will we will pick the cat back. So there are certain procedures we have to follow, but it's certainly durable. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. I was under the impression that it was like thirty days to bring a cat or a dog in to be quarantined, and after being here now and traveling throughout China, it's like, huh? I wonder if they have a job for me here at Zoetis in Shanghai <laughs> because I would love to come, but I'm not sure if I could put my cats in quarantine for a month. But a week. 
they might be able to handle that one. Right. So a week because that's all I can, I can uh-huh. handle. So more than <laughs> <laughs> so we kind of just call them, just beg them to give back to us early. I don't remember how long it's, but it's it maybe it's it's thirty days, but that's. Week is all we can handle, so we I called them and they just try to give us back earlier. So they they say okay after they finish all the procedure, they uh-huh. so they give us back to us. <laughs> Very good. That's good to know. People traveling with their pets. Is there anything else? I mean, I really appreciate you taking your time today uh, to conduct this interview. Is there anything else that I haven't asked that you want the people to know about? Veterinary medicine zoetis here in China. We just feel very exciting about the market here because、um, so much we see, we can do, we can change, we can make a difference. So we just moving along day by day and just see it's it's coming together. So so I hope、uh, people can have the opportunity to come to China and also see the veterinary market here. So. And that's very rewarding for me as well. Coming back for five years now. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Miss Lee. This has been a wonderful enlightenment for me, and hopefully the listeners will also realize that China is making major strides in helping the cat and dog population, as well as production animals to here in China. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Pets can be a wonderful addition to your life because they're a member of the family. Keeping them healthy and happy is important. Pet Life Radio presents the Pet Doctor with veterinary media consultant and veterinarian Dr. Bernadine Cruz. Whether you have a dog, cat, reptile, or rabbit, you'll find answers for your pets straight from the vets. The Pet Doctor on demand every week only on PetLifeRadio.com.